Hey Internet! Welcome back to Scott's Retro Tech Workshop. We've got a new computer here, or it's actually an old computer, uh, that I've picked up on the Ebays. A TRS-80 Model 1. Um, this is a, a 16K with Level 2 Basic uh, already installed. And the one thing it didn't come with was any cables or a power supply. So in this first part of the video, we're putting together through for Septandy, um, September here, and we're going to build a power supply um, from uh, parts and a board that I ordered through Ian Maverick in Australia and ordered the uh, power transformers through DigiKey. So let's get over to the bench and we'll solder together a couple of little things and we'll be ready to go. Okay, here we are at the workbench. We've got, uh, we only need really four things. So um, the kit comes, I would say 95% assembled. When you order the kit, either through eBay or through Ian's website directly, and I'll put a link to the website, this is what you get. You get this board. The circuit was designed by Dean Bear and the PC layout, PC board layout by David uh, Modimer. But Ian has kind of taken it upon himself to be the main guy selling these things. He's a TRS-80 expert. And I'm sure if you're watching these Septandy videos, you've seen him or seen a lot of his products before. He's also handling the FRED hard drive device for all the TRS-80, Z80 computers. Um, and you just have to tell him, you know, whether you want 110 volt or 220. He kind of figures it out, I guess, by <laughs> where he's shipping it to. But to save money on the shipping, because the transformers are quite heavy, you have to supply the two transformers that go here, and you have to supply your AC mains cord here. Everything else, all these connectors and the rectifier and the capacitor and the little power LED and the fuse already come pre-installed. So you don't, this is how it comes out of the package. He even gives you a connector to go to the back of the computer that plugs in here. And this board is designed to fit inside the expansion box and it's got that's why it has two power connectors and it actually comes with another one a shorter one of these so that you put this inside the uh, expand peripheral box and there's a place normally for two power packs one for the box and one for the computer and this replaces that whole setup and gives you the two cords that you run out one outside the box to the computer and the short one to plug into the expansion interface so, uh, the first thing we have to do is figure out how we're going to connect this to the power. And I've just got a two-wire cord, um, and it solders on right here. And then I have the two transformers. There's a DC transformer and an AC transformer. Um, the ones I've ordered are these AMGIS, AMGIS transformers, or they're actually known as a S7 or L016360 and 016361 and it tells you that right here which one to use. You can also use a Telema 70061K and 70060K um, but I found these Amgis ones at um, DigiKey. They're about 15 to 18 dollars a piece something like that. With shipping it was about $50 and the board runs about $50, $55 plus shipping of course but it comes pre-assembled pretty much with the cables ready to go. So you could here put a connector, a two pin connector and then wire your AC plug to that but I'm just going to solder it right into these holes. Now the problem is these holes are designed for a solder type connector to fit the 18 gauge wire or whatever this is 
that comes on one of these two prong lamp cords is a little too small to fit through the holes. So what I'm gonna do is drill out the hole a little bit. It doesn't have to be much, and I'm just gonna do it with a drill that you would either put in a, like a screwdriver or a screw gun, and it's sharp enough where you can just, and it's just not increasing the size enough um, to where you can just run this through by hand, and it'll just go right through, and you're not gonna mess up the pads or anything like that. It's just enough just to give it a little extra space you can see I made the hole a little bit bigger and we'll do this one I'll just and you could use a Dremel or whatever but this is just as easy it doesn't really require much work and we'll just run it through a couple times just to make sure we have all the you know debris out of the hole and we'll make sure these are tight and now they should yep, go right in twist that a little better and this is kind of a temporary situation I want to get a nice case for this and I may eventually find and I uh, figure out what kind of two prong plug that I want to use for this side um, you know and wire it up wire it up really good but for the most part for now as long as you get it and I've got a little box for it to sit in so that I'm not gonna have live power sitting around um, we'll uh, you know keep it up off the desk and it'll keep my fingers out of it <laughs> so let me get this soldered up and I'll come right back okay next thing we have to do is put the two transformers on and I've labeled them already just with a pen DC transformer AC transformer based on part numbers this tells you the DC goes here on the left AC goes on the right and they're just a solder type with the pins they're just going to fit in the line up in the holes it'll take a little finagling to get everything lined up right um, but we'll get those installed and then we'll come right back you don't have to sit there and watch me solder be right back okay we got it all soldered up got the pins trimmed close on the bottom and I even found a case that it'll fit in it's kind of a it's not really the right case because it's a double case with a, a rubber gasket it's like double this height so I'm either gonna use this box and print a top or I'll find another box that's this dimension because believe it or not this fits in there exactly perfect it fits right in, sits on the bottom. I can just hold it in with some double stick tape or some little rubber bumpers. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna leave it in there like that just so that I don't have a tendency to touch anything. And um, let's plug it in and see if we get the red light or if we get sparks and a magic smoke. There we go, red light. Fuse must be working. Now we'll take it over to the other side and plug it into the computer and see what we got. Let me get you set up over there on the computer bench. Okay, here we are back over on the computer side of the bench. And we've got the computer. Uh, I found a monitor that seems to work pretty well with this computer. A uh, little LCD monitor. Now, like I said, it didn't come with any cords, so I had to make a composite video cord and then I even made an audio cord because a lot of the games believe it or not play audio through the cassette deck port so it's just a standard five pin din to a RCA male plug it's the same cord that you make up for composite video and then we have the power and of course all three of them use a five pin din so you have to be very careful where you're putting them in so I've labeled them all the power is red 
and says TRS-80 power. And then we have Model 1 audio and Model 1 video. And it's not that bad, it's easy to remember. The power plug goes in next to the power switch. And then the audio goes on the far right. And the video goes in the middle. So not too hard to remember. And I even have one of Ian Maverick's Fred units with the quinter face, which is what you need to connect it to a Model 1 without the expansion interface box. Um, and I've got a box coming for this. We're going to make it, you know, nice. He sells a box you can order. Um, but I had pre-ordered a lot of this stuff before I even got the computer. And all we have to do there is plug that ribbon cable from there into the back. I can get it lined up right. And here we go. Oops. Forgot to turn on the turn on the thread. Hold on. There we go. There's the Fred. Comes for the Model 1 with DOS Plus 3.5, LDOS 531, and new DOS 2.5. Um, and that goes on to an SD card that they provide. They provide all the cables. The only thing you have to make is a 5 volt power cord. And I will show you how to do that when I build the box. That'll be an another video. Because we're going to have one more video for this. I want to do some, change out some of the capacitors and give it an overall little bit of a brush on the inside. I've taken the cover off. Um, and I've also made a new ribbon cable for between the keyboard and the motherboard. And we'll show you all in that in the next video. So there we go. Uh, power supply for the TRS-80 Model 1. Um, also works with the expansion box and ready to go. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, comments, all that YouTube stuff. Thanks.